and welcome to another Every Tuesday tutorial. In this week's tutorial, we're going to be creating this pattern fade, um, both in Illustrator and in Photoshop. And pattern fades are really useful for um, more luxurious, richer, more expensive types of um, client work applications. So this is just a really quick way to add that more luxurious feel to any type of application. So uh, I'm going to be using this pattern fade in um, two different methods in Illustrator and Photoshop. So in Illustrator, we're going to be using a gradient fade and in Photoshop, which the solution right here, you can see um, I'm using a layer mask. So to get started, let's create this pattern over here. And Illustrator has a really great pattern making tool, but for this, we're just going to do the quick and dirty way, um, just copying and pasting just for time's sake. So um, this was a really easy pattern to make. I just grabbed my rectangle tool, and if I hold shift, it'll make it a square instead of a rectangle. So I just made a square. Um, I'm using two colors for this just to give that kind of tonal effect with the fade. So the darker blue color build, I'm working in RGB, so this, this would be for a digital application, but um, definitely feel free to do CMYK. The RGB build, however, for this is the darker blue, 88, 123, 124, and this teal color is 139, 174, 162, which you can see over here in my color palette. So now I've got a square and I need to make it a diamond. So um, I'm just gonna rotate it, right click, transform, rotate, and choose 45 degrees. Okay. So now I need eight of these in a row, um, evenly spaced. So I'm going to click on this, I'm going to hold Alt, and as I drag, I'm going to hold Shift to keep it in a straight line. And I'm going to grab both of these, Alt, drag, hold Shift, all of these, Alt, drag, hold Shift. Okay, so now I've got them in a row, but they're not evenly spaced. So in order to do that, uh, I'm going to rubber band select all of them, and then up here, I'm going to select, I'm going to click on this horizontal distribute center button and you could see them shift a little bit. So now there's the exact same space between each one of these. Now I don't really like this diamond bounding box. It's kind of enormous. So I'm going to change that by right clicking, transform, reset bounding box. And that just makes it a little easier for me um, to work with. So last thing we need to add is this line through the center. So you could do this two ways. You could either grab your rectangle tool again by hitting M on your keyboard, or um, I'm gonna use a stroke using the line tool. So I'm gonna grab the line tool. I'm gonna click in the center of the leftmost diamond. I'm gonna drag and then I'm gonna hold shift to keep it straight and then go to the center of the rightmost diamond. Now you can see I don't have any color on it at all because if um, you look over here, my stroke is empty. So I need um, the same color applied to it. So with this brought forward, make sure to click on this so it's in front of the fill. I'm gonna hit the I keyboard on my, or the I button on my keyboard, um, and then I'm gonna hover over the color that I need, hold shift, and now by default in your stroke palette, um, it has a one point stroke. If you don't have your stroke palette over here, you can get to it by going window stroke. Um, and I want a five point stroke. So I'm just gonna select this, put in five, and I'm good to go. All right, the only thing is, is I need this to be a shape and not, um, not a stroke. So in order to create a shape out of a stroke, I'm just gonna go up to Object, Expand, um, and make sure it's selected when you're doing this. And then just make sure stroke selected. If it's selected, that's fine too. Just hit OK. And now I've got shapes. I've got a bunch of shapes right here. Everything's a shape. But I want this entire thing to be one shape. So I need to merge all these together. And to do that, I'm going to come to my Pathfinder tool right here. I'm going to click this Unite button. Um, so that becomes one shape then. Uh, if you don't see the Pathfinder, same way you got uh, a stroke palette, just come up to Window and Pathfinder and you'll see the same thing. So we're almost there. Um, now I just need to make the rest of this pattern. So I'm just gonna grab this, hold Alt again, drag, um, and I want it a little off center, so I'm gonna place it right there. I'm gonna select both of these all, and then I'm gonna hold Shift to keep it straight. And I'm gonna do this a bunch of times. Alt, hold Shift. Um, yeah, let's do this all. Alt, hold Shift. All right, now I got a lot of these, so I'm gonna shrink them a little bit. I'm gonna select them all, hold Shift. This just uniformly scales everything. All right, so we need to make sure that the space like from this one to this one is the same as like this one to this one. 
So in order to do that, we're going to vertically distribute everything. So instead of this button, we're going to hit this button, vertically distribute center. And you can see everything shifted a little bit. And I want to group all of these together, so I'm going to hit Command-G on my keyboard or Control-G if you're on a PC. And now when I click one, I click them all. All right, next step, we've got our pattern. So now we need to um, get this foundation's background in. So I'm just gonna hit M on my keyboard. I'm just gonna freehand a rectangle and I'm gonna color it this blue, which one more time is 88, 123, 124. All right, so now when you drag your pattern on top of your rectangle, you'll notice it's behind it. Um, and we want it in front. So all you have to do is select your pattern only, right click, arrange, bring to front, and now it's on top. All right, so we're gonna apply a gradient onto this, but the important thing um, to know about gradients and shapes is that a gradient is applied to one individual shape. Even if, um, like we've got a group of shapes, so each one of these is a shape on its own. They're just grouped together. But we need this entire thing to be one shape. Otherwise, when we apply a gradient, there will be a gradient in here, there will be a gradient in here, and in here. Whereas we need the gradient to span across all of them at once. So in order to create this entire thing as one shape, it's called a compound path that we need to make. So with our group selected, we're gonna go up to Object, Compound Path, and click Make. The keyboard shortcut is Command-8 or Control-8 on a PC. Do not skip this step, this is really important for our fade. All right, so that's all it, it doesn't look any different, but it is different, um, and you'll see why in just a moment. So now with our pattern selected, we're gonna come over to our gradient palette, which you can get to by going Window Gradient, and it'll show up. Um, so this is the color of our pattern currently, but we need to apply a gradient. And all gradients in Illustrator by default go from white to black. So we're just gonna click on this color and drag it and drag it in. All right, so now we've got white, the color we want, and black in here. And we want this color on both ends because we're gonna go from 100% of this color to 0% of this color in order to create that fade. So I can get rid of the white by just clicking and dragging off but every gradient needs to have um, a start and a finish, so it always has to have two colors at least, so I can't just get rid of black the same way I got rid of white. So in order to, um, now you can see we can't just drag the color again because it's got that gradient, the, the color to the black in there. So in order to duplicate this, um, I'm just gonna hold Alt on my keyboard and just click and drag, and now I have two of these. And now I can get rid of my black and drag this one all the way to the other end. And this little node right above it, this is um, this shows the transition of where when we have 100% of this color to 0%, this is where that transition um, takes place. And you can, you can drag it, and, um, and I'll show you how that, that changes as we move it in just a minute. So I'm going to click on the leftmost one and make sure it's 100%. And then I'm going to click on the rightmost one and change the opacity to 0%. And by default, it's gonna fade from left to right, like we have it right here. And you can see as I drag this, it changes where the fade begins. So now the fade begins closer to where it's 100%, whereas if I drag it all the way over here, the fade begins as it gets very close to 0%. So I need this to go at an angle. So I'm gonna do a negative 45 degree angle right here. And if I drag this transition to like, you can see location right here, I'm gonna drag it to 20%. And if I deselect, you can see I've got that really nice fade going in right there. And that, I'm really happy with that, so I'm gonna keep that. Um, so the last thing that I need to do is crop it in. You can see over here, I don't have any kind of pattern hanging off. It's actually um, clipping masked into the shape. So that's, it sounds a lot harder than it is to do. Um, so all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this background rectangle color. And you can see I've got it selected because it's the dark blue right here. And I'm gonna hit Command C or Control C on a PC. And then I'm gonna hit Command F or Command, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna deselect over here. Then I'm gonna hit Command F on a Mac or Control F on a PC. And that's gonna paste that exact same shape only 
to the very front. So it's exactly on top of it, but it's on top of everything else. Um, all the other elements here, it's the, the topmost item. So with that selected, I'm gonna hold shift and I'm gonna select just my pattern. So now I have the pattern in that top shape selected and then I'm gonna right click, make clipping mask, and now it's masked inside there. And that's all there is to it. And then you can add your title or any kind of other artwork that you need, information can go right there and you've got that really rich looking um, kind of texture almost. So that's how you do it in Illustrator. So let's quick do it in Photoshop. I'm just gonna grab this pattern. I'm gonna hit Command C or Control C on a PC, jump into Photoshop. I'm gonna turn off the one that I did as the example. So I'll just get rid of it. All right, so we've got our shape again. And I'm just gonna hit Command V or Control V on a PC. I'm gonna paste it in. And now I'm gonna hold Shift and just enlarge it. That looks pretty good. All right, so now we need to fade it. So we need to use a layer mask. So I'm gonna click this button right down here to apply a layer mask. And we're gonna grab our brush tool, which you can get to by just hitting B on your keyboard. And up here you can um, toggle down your settings. I'm using a really big brush, 400 pixels, and it's super soft, so it's 0% for hardness. I'm just gonna click anywhere to get out of that. My opacity is set at 25%, which is really important. And the other important thing is, is when you're working with a mask, black conceals, white reveals. So anywhere I paint black, it's gonna cover up whatever I'm painting on. And anywhere I paint white, it's gonna reveal. So if I delete something and I wanna make it appear again, then I just switch to white. So I'll show you how that works. So I'm gonna start with black because I need to, um, I need to get rid of some of this. So because my opacity is 25%, it's a really gradual fade, so I can kind of control it. So this part I need to make almost go away, and every time you click, it's uh, applying that 25% again. Um, so say um, I wanna, I, I erase too much right here, and I wanna bring it back. So if I hit X on my keyboard, it actually reverses the black and white. So now I'm painting white, and all I have to do is paint over it, and you can see it reveals it. And now I need to conceal again, so I'm gonna hit X, and now I've got black again so I can start painting and erase. So that's a pretty good um, fade right there. So in order to crop this in like we did in Illustrator, I'm just gonna right click right here on my pattern layer and create clipping mask and now it's masked inside of there just like we did in Illustrator. So that's a quick way to make a pattern fade in Illustrator and Photoshop using two different methods and we created our own pattern. Pretty productive. All right, so if you like tutorials like this, please subscribe. I release a new tutorial or freebies over on my blog every Tuesday. There's a dash between every and Tuesday um, every week. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.